Welcome, everybody. Uh, huh. This is the This Is Not Legal Advice podcast with me, Margie, and Daisy. And I'm here on Widjibal Weibull Country today. And I'm on Yagara Country. Yeah. And we welcome you to finding out about um, legal issues from an activist perspective. We are not lawyers, and so we can't give anything that's anything near advice. This is not advice. So that's the name yeah. of this podcast. This is this not is legal not advice. legal advice. Yeah, but we do have information and experiences that we want to share with you. And today we're going to talk about bail. Yeah. And bail is uh, a, you know, it's it becomes a problem for us when the police try and control us using bail, and this is what they're doing a lot of recently. Yeah. Daisy, do you want to give us an example of tell us a story from you about a time that you got bail? That you got um, not got bail, annoying bail, like bail conditions, like uh, they, yes. Oh, you will bail you, but only if you have to do this, 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 and this. Yeah, so uh, that was uh, during when we'd done a, a series of block blockades of roads in Sydney. And it was just when the new laws had come out that making that uh, more of an indictable offence to block a road and more more of a bigger fine. Anyway, the bail conditions were um, to non associate with the people I was arrested with, which was one of the biggest things that really affected me because those pe people I was arrested with were also my family, my support network, my community. You know, the people that yeah that I needed. You'd living life, with you know. you've been living with them too, hadn't you? Absolutely, yeah. So what did that mean? Where did you have to go and live? Yeah, so I had to go and live elsewhere, away from where I had been living, and it was a really distressing time, especially when you are going through the court system. You know, that's when you need your friends and family the most. And did and other then, people get those at around that same turn time so they had, like, cross non-associations? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it went as far as, I mean, not myself personally, but I know a lot of people went as far as, having orders on them to surrender their phone to the police at any time. Um, and, you know, we, we know of a lot of our friends that it really did inflict a lot of unnecessary um, angst and, you know, inconvenience on their lives. Sort of caught us by surprise a bit too, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. We didn't know that they would be using these laws or these conditions against us um processes sorry is what we said wasn't it yeah they're that, processes. You know, that they're used for bikey gangs that are you know you know sex trafficking and drug dealing yeah so one of the things we found out is that they use the, the police they're not very bright and they just use the same systems that they have for all the different things they do and um one of the things we found out is that one of the things they're quite good at is in the last 20 years they've learned how to smash a network of dangerous uh, uh, drug businesses. I'm going to call them dangerous yeah. drug businesses because we know they're non-dangerous drug businesses as well, right? But these Absolutely. are drug businesses that are based on standover tactics, threats, um, violence, and they can burst out in these, um, you know, moments of extreme violence. Like a couple of years ago in Sydney, two young women sitting in the car were killed um, because they thought they were someone else or somebody gets car bombed or there's drive-by shooting. So they, they explode into this series of murders. Um, and so the police had to work out a way of um, of breaking up the relationships in these in these dangerous uh, drug businesses that, you know, fought over turf. Um, and we, we like to think that we're structured somewhat differently, don't we? Yeah. How are we structured? Do we do we often uh, roll over into dangerous drive by shootings? No, 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 hardly ever. Hardly ever. <laughs> yeah, I think the dangerous thing we do is eat too many beans. Yeah, and then obviously the uh, a lot. Of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So be cautious of coming across a hippie vegan, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and but to, one of the things these bail conditions is supposed to do are supposed to address the danger. So none of the yeah. them actually address the dangerous farting that we might do. <laughs> Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> oh, 
So we're yeah. going to talk a little bit about, um, so this is why I want to talk about why it's quite important. Um, and of course, this is not legal advice, but we find as yeah. activists that that created a web There was ended up being a lot of people on these non-associations in the middle of the year of 2022. And it caught us by surprise. And we didn't, we 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 had to stay away from each other. Let's just say that we had to stay away from each other, and yeah. um, that made it very difficult to organise our legal cases, uh, to work together, to keep protesting. Um, you know, everything was difficult, and um, yeah, I won't go into how we dealt with that, but that's for another day. But I just to say, from Daisy and I, it was very hard, and mm-hmm. what we've. And, and and no one helped us then peel back the bail conditions, which we probably could have done within a week, right? Yeah, we, we weren't think- really even aware of the process of a bail application, a bail variation application then, because uh, basically a lot of the lawyers we had um, was wanted us to be grateful for what we got in sort of in a way, you know, which yeah. I know they just, you know, that's their way of interpreting what happened in those courtrooms, but we have since, had lots of discussions and shared lots of stories with each other and and uh, hence coming up with this podcast. Yeah. Of which not, is not legal, legal advice. advice. No, this is not legal advice, but this is what we <laughs> found is useful for us. And so the first thing is that you have to get on to the conditions and get them removed as soon as possible. And we're going to talk a yeah. little bit about how you do that. Um, and the very first way is to try and not get them in the first place. Yeah. So, so can you tell us a bit about what you've done recently, Margie? Yeah, what yes. Your bail. Yeah, um, I just you know, had a win. Offers. <laughs> yeah, you've just had a funny old week. <laughs> funny old week and a bit of a win because uh, mm. the three of us were given bail, were going to be given bail conditions that said we couldn't associate with each other and the other co-accused. And the three of us worked together to stay in. Um, oh, to, so it was very early in the morning, actually, and I thought we'd get into the afternoon court, but we didn't because they like to hold you in as long as possible and make yeah. sure you go out to another action. So, um, and so what you can start to see here is this is about tactics and not about the court and the law. We're in police tactics business. And I think one of the things when we're in police tactics business is we don't cooperate with police tactics. Yes. So it's not legal advice, but... You've got to be wary if you're in, in a law, a real legal process or are you in a police tactics process? And what we've discovered is this is actually a police tactics process um, that's designed yeah. to break us up. And um, it's not about getting back to court, which bail is supposed to be like. It's not with a presumption of liberty, which bail is supposed to be. Um, and it's not about harming others because we don't harm others, which is bail is also. It's a police tactic to keep us. Anyway, this week I... Yeah. The three, because we were three people together and we knew each other and we decided beforehand we refused to sign the bail condition that said um, when they tried to release us, we said, no, nah. um, and we we said, no, nah, we're going to put, it, put me in front of a magistrate, have a magistrate make that decision. So that's the first thing is not the yeah. police make the decision. I want a magistrate to make that decision as soon as possible because in Queensland, a bit not like New South Wales, but in Queensland, the magistrates do not like bail conditions. Yeah, and the misuse of them in this case. Really. The misuse of them because they understand that we have the right to protest. Right. Um, so it went in front of another 24 hours, it went in front of a magistrate and they didn't even put bail conditions to her virtually, right? They didn't put the non-associations to her because they knew she wouldn't accept them. Um, yeah. And we had 50 metre, we're not allowed to go back to those weapons dealers, 50 metres is what they gave us which because they'd scared us so much and I couldn't quite think of an argument on the hop, I took that as a bail condition from the magistrate. Um, though I'd rather not have any, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah. So are you saying then, Margie, that you can actually question part of the bail um, order? You can, you don't have to you can do it all as one. You can say, I agree with this part for now, but I just want this part off and then I'll sign. You can actually negotiate a bit with those clauses well, a bit. Yeah? What we've discovered happens is that the police come in and negotiate with your lawyer. If you've got a lawyer, the police and the lawyer negotiate and they cut the magistrate out and then they put a joint decision to the magistrate. And that is something we're really encouraging people not 
to do. That really is not legal advice that I think is a very sensible thing. I'm not a lawyer, but I think when your lawyer negotiates with the police prosecutor who's in with the police, you're still in the tactics business. You're in the tactics business. What your lawyer should be saying is they might have to pretend to negotiate because that's part of what they have to do as a lawyer. But yeah. really, it needs to go, the whole no bail conditions needs to be put to the magistrate. No bail conditions. Yeah. So you don't negotiate it. You just you just can't find a way of arguing against it and you sort of lose and you get a couple of small bail conditions. Yeah, and you might indicate that to your legal aid person or whatever at the time, but not actually disclose that to the police prosecutors or the magistrate. That's right. That's right. Love that. Awesome. So as you can see this this is the line. Police tactics below the line, the magistrate and the court above the line. You've got more chance in the court system than you do in the police tactics system. Yeah. Right. So that's Lovely. the first yeah, so we, that's, we we just figured that out now. You you yeah, here well, are with right. us when we just that's new theory. Not police not advice, but new theory. So um, I've got a, here's a thing that I prepared earlier that was just for my um a, my bail appeal the other day because I had to argue why I shouldn't have any bail conditions. So I'm just going to share mm-hmm. the screen, um, and show you. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Share that diagram. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get all my Ooh. emails in the meantime. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so you can see that. Oh, so let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um. I started, I had a police officer telling me, just tell them what a good person you are and that you're a very upsta- good upstanding citizen. That's where you start. So that's where I started. Um, and, yes. Yeah, so what, what sort of things we, can we say in their days? So, uh, yeah, we could just say, um, you know, would that be covering the point that you've never missed a court appearance? Well, that's that... the integrity of the court case, actually. Oh, that's the integrity, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so your good standing would be your connection with your community, your role in the community. Uh, look at what the kind of things that I do. You know, I feed the homeless. I, you know, I support my, in your case, I support, you know, my son and, and my community. Yeah. Um, all those things, yeah. And maybe a little bit of your philosophy, um, if you, you've you got a commitment to not harmful behaviour or non-dominating behaviour, that would be good because we're going to move into how you are not dangerous, right? So you've got yeah. to say, I've, I've, been, I've lived this life for this many years and I've only got two little minor assaults for things that, you know, I didn't really mean or something. You know, like made up like, by the police. Yeah, if you've got a couple <laughs> of assaults there, you're going to have to sort of fudge over them. But, um, you know, yeah. generally say right now I'm of good standing, I, I, I'm against violence, I'm against, yeah. stand against violence at every level. That's why I'm taking this action, which standing against violence. Um, uh, yeah. So you describe a little bit who you are. Then um, there are three three um, principles in the preamble or in the bail sort of sphere that you have to address. One is that about not being dangerous because yeah. they say you shouldn't be dangerous to the victim, there is no victim, um, individuals yeah. or the community. And you can say, well, I'm not yeah. dangerous to anybody. That's just if the police have said I am, they've made that up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, um, exactly. That is a blatant lie. Yeah. This is pretty the, much the reason why drug uh, dangerous or violent drug businesses get bail conditions, right? It's because they are dangerous to, to other people. People get caught up in a web of um of escalating violence. And so they're mm-hmm. trying instead of that escalating, they're trying to keep it down. But we don't have that issue. And so we have to really point that out that we're not harmful. Um the ca- integrity of the court case is the second principle. So first one is that we're not dangerous. The second one is that the integrity of the court case um is that we're going to come back to we're going to back to court. Have you ever missed a court date? Daisy? Sorry? Have you ever missed a court date? Never. Me neither. All right? No. Have yeah. you ever threatened any witnesses and told them, don't do no. here, I'm going to slash <laughs> No? Ba-bam. It's usually them that moved the court date at the last minute and put put stress, more stress and pressure on you to leave Good your point. community and be there. Good point. Like, such thing happened this week with you. That's right. The only... The only the only beings undermining the integrity court case of, is the government with their shambles yeah. of court.
support systems. Yes. All right, so that, that's the second thing in the preamble. So you've got to address that I'm going to go back. I always go back to court. I've never missed one. And if I did, it was because, you know, something. And then yeah. the third principle is this right to liberty. And the, the Bail Act yeah. is really all about the presumption of a right to liberty. That is what bail is. It's the presumption of the right to liberty unless there are extreme circumstances that you shouldn't be let out. Um, so that's like just to be released. But we're saying that when they give us conditions, it's also um, an impact on our liberty. And we're going yeah. to talk about that in a moment. I'll come back to that, but I'll just finish this first because that's a bit of a sidetrack. And the last yeah. one is you got to say they've got a weak case. They made a whole lot of assertions. You just stuck yeah. a few templates on glass. You know, yeah. that actually it's quite... Look, they're trying to make it sound like you're massively dangerous when actually you went through a door and stuck some pamphlets on some glass. It's yeah. not, What's the look, danger in just standing in a room with your mates holding a banner up and singing? La, 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 la. <laughs> yeah. This is not legal advice. Legal advice. <laughs> uh, so so that's, the, that's the, the fifth sort of thing in this framework. But I just want to come back to yes. liberty. Love to come back to liberty because... Um, we do have the right to liberty uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, and we, the two sort of main areas are um, the Constitution says we have the right for freedom of, there's an implied right for the freedom of communication, right? Yeah. And that's because under a democracy, people are supposed to be able to talk to each other about what's going on in order to understand what's going on, in order to make decisions about how they want to arrange their society, right? So yeah. if you are not allowed to speak to people, that is a massive uh, jam in your yeah. implied right to communication and your ability to speak to your community. And there is a case here that, you know, people should make themselves familiar with that this is not legal advice, but I did get this. Yeah from a lawyer, but it wasn't legal advice either, um, uh, that Brown versus Tasmania, which is Bob Brown. Yeah, I've not heard about that one. What happened there? Well, it went to the High Court. They they, they introduced a new law. So the Constitution is supposed, to, um, is supposed to govern and the High Court governs new laws and the operationalisation of those laws. All right, so bail is the operationalization of the lawyers. But this was actually about a new law that you shouldn't, you, you couldn't protest in a logging coop. Mm. And they took it and they they didn't win it. They said, in the end, they said, no, they, look, there is a balance of rights here, but this law goes way too far because it stops people from protesting in a range of ways in the future uh, because exactly. it scares people, it deters people. It's way too broad. People won't yeah. ever get involved in politics if you've got that sitting there because it's too um, frightening for people to have that law. And so, but what they do in in this in this in this um, uh, case in the in the judgment is the the judges are saying these things are principles that we shouldn't be deterring protesters. We shouldn't be deterring people from community speech and talking with each other and organising. We shouldn't be stopping people from doing protests that are going to occur in the future. Um, so these are the principles they outline when they reject yes. them. Absolutely, yeah, blatantly, glaringly obvious to us. And um, we just need to keep, you know, reminding each other of that, that we're the ones who are in the right and, you know, educating other members of the public who, who, who you need to know, you know, how corrupt the system has become against people that are, taking a stand on climate and social justice issues. That's right, and genocide. Yeah, genocide. The genocide yeah. going on right now and yeah. trying to draw attention to how people are uh, uh, expressly contributing to that genocide and we're not allowed to talk about it. In, we're, you know, we're given some corner to be quiet. Well, that's not implied right of communication no. if one hears you. Exactly. All right. So the second thing, uh, the second thing is the international law. Oh yeah, Article Twenty One. Uh, Article yeah. Twenty One, which is the right, the civil cover, the covenant on civil, blah 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 blah. The right to assembly, peaceful assembly. Basically, it's the right to assembly. Yeah. Article Twenty One is the right to assembly in the 
civil covenant, blah, blah, what it's called. Um, yeah. And so that's a, we do have a right to organise. We have to right to prepare for assembly. We have a right to go home after assembly. We have a right to communicate about a new, new and future assemblies. Um, and that these, this, um, these bail conditions that say we have to stay in one place or that we can't talk to each other, um, they get in the way of these rights. Yeah, yeah, and practically and, you know, socially, emotionally, it is, you know, not something we want to be part of the culture. So that's why we're saying, and I'm not legal advice, that any kind of bail conditions, um, you know, we should be looking very stringently at those. Yeah, it, get on it And appealing, yeah. Yeah. In a so, legal advice way. It's not this not legal advice, but it doesn't seem or it it's taken a while to figure this out, but they don't seem to be an appeal, right? You just have variation at the magistrate's level and then another variation at the another magistrate's level. And at another on another show we'll talk about other ways you can handle these variations. But today the principle is getting quick, like re yeah, stop, the stop whole them signing thing in first. Appeal. Yeah. Get them in back in front of a mag another magistrate as soon as you can, or you can take them to a Supreme Court. It's not an appeal, and it's got no precedence. It's just you in the world. Yeah, but you yeah. are putting your your thinking out. Um, yeah, and you what you, what you would be doing is taking it to the Supreme Court um, for a bail application in the Supreme Court if the magistrate didn't give you the outcome that you wanted. Yeah, and I feel like each time we have an opportunity to go through the courts together, you know, even your, you know, you might be that individual on the case. It's, we're going through together, and we're learning things, and we're sharing things, and we're, you know, discussing in our not legal advice way how we can get yeah. a better outcome for everybody. Yeah, so we're going to try that this week. I'm going to self rep in the Supreme Court um, on a. Uh, on some non-associations from last year, and um, yeah, I've still I'm still having new thoughts about it, even as I prepare these like next few days. So, yes. you know, we are we're new we're lay people, we're not lawyers, and um, unfortunately, it's either expensive to get a lawyer or they yeah, it's just hard to get them, or they they have a quite an, they're only allowed to operate in this just in that amount of space, and we're allowed to yeah. Operate in a slightly bigger space. In yeah, like they might be, you know, in theory and whatever, in principle, in their own personal principles, they might want to support the activists and the type of work we're doing. But when it comes to the crunch, we have very few people that would do pro bono or go all the way with us, let's say, yeah. Yeah, and we're really grateful for the ones that we do have because they're... Yeah, we do. We get lots of amazing really advice and, yeah. 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 And we and then we pass on our not legal advice to our friends and listeners. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what else should we talk about in about bail, you reckon, Daisy? Um we talked about that. I uh, think you talk about the weakness of the case. Like we did we stressing, you know, yeah, that, did yeah. that's like I stuck a few pieces on the glass, you know. Yeah. Or I just sat another down list. and another and list. sang with my friends. People often say to me at work, because I'm a registered nurse, you know, what did you do this time, Daisy? And I go, I sat on a road and sang a song with my friends while holding a banner yeah. peacefully. We actually we actually sing songs about we are peaceful and nonviolent, you know. So yeah. Just trying um, to get it out. What are some of the other conditions we've talked about not being able to talk to our friends? So might some oh, of yeah. The conditions that people might find on their as they leave the watch house, they're like, "All right, sign yeah. this," and they're so like, it "Might be well, something about like exclusion from the area you've been in, for example. Yeah, if you you were in those weapons dealers' office, so fifty meters away, or sometimes people get excluded from state forests if it's a forest action. That may be something that's on there. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to talk about that, actually, because I have a case that people should know about, which is um, 1994, uh, Flynn and Patton was in, were in front of Justice Byrne. And I think I was in that court courtroom when this uh, judgment came down. But they also, mm. they'd won, they had that exact same thing that Daisy just described. They were told not to go back into a, um, into a coop that they'd been in. 
Um, and in the Supreme Court, they said, no, no, I can't allow that because that type of bail condition, I'm going to strike that type of bail condition out because it stops future protest. And um, the implied right of communication is um, that uh, that sort of probability, that sort of decision needs to get made much higher than the magistrate's court. And he yeah. said it, it needs to get made in the Supreme Court by an injunction which means you, you go to the Supreme Court, you put all the information and then a, a higher level judge makes the decision by injunction. So it becomes a civil process. And yeah. um, he said, especially for summary offences, it says, which I hadn't noticed until last night, it um, that he was he, he thinks that uh, those types of bail conditions just should not be issued. No. And yeah, so those are going to 1994, Burn Jay. Yeah. Uh, I have a copy of it if anybody wants, and they've been using it reliably in uh, in New in Victoria for thirty years. Yeah, was that <laughs> Flynn and Patton? Did you say Flynn and Patton? Yeah, yeah. versus the Victorian courts. Yeah, okay, no good. That sounds good. I'd like to have a look at that. Yeah, it's only a little small judgment, but basically says, no, this is a liberty issue, so therefore it shouldn't mm. be being made by police or magistrates. It should be made in yeah. a while. Yeah. And we have to remember that's how the court system works. You know, we have to take it higher and higher, and the more we do that, the more maybe publicity it gets, the more um, ex mm. expert opinion comes into it, and the more we show the violence inherent in the state against our non-violent citizen True. ways you know true and we've so the other one is reporting sometimes people have had hectic reporting oh, like it's yeah. random like sometimes i get like all right you have to go twice a week or every day yeah or sometimes like some people have like more than once a day twice a day and, yeah and that is just very inconvenient and distressing and, and also we talked about people that are even under curfew in their own home that's right. So your that own home turns into your prison. As and that mostly fairly close friends have had in the last couple of years. Yeah, and that so mostly comes when they're being released year. from jail on an appeal. Yeah. Remember, they, then they get bail as they get released from jail, and then the bail tends to be very high. Yeah, and then the, obviously those police checks are very distressing, and then obviously the police conveniently forget whether uh, the, the um, you know, some of the curfew um, conditions have been lifted and they still come around at all hours and, you know, you still have this kind of oppressive um, regime in your life. Yeah. And obviously, you know, yeah, that's... And that's very, when you notice it's still tactics, right? It's police tactics. It's very much, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very much that other violence of the state rearing its ugly head. But, yeah, that can be something that happens with these... Um, orders you know so i was on bail last year with a set of four or five nasty uh conditions uh for four, for eight months and no one yeah. told me that i could go and vary it right and no one offered to go and vary it for me they just went oh you didn't know oh, yeah I had no idea and then yeah when i went to vary it they were all dropped yeah because right. they're like oh you actually questioned it so i feel like we should do another podcast about variations as well because it's been more about doing the whole thing yeah that's right but i we'll feel like people should have a bit of an awareness about variations and maybe that could go with other things that might happen like addressing that you know, after being, yeah. being arrested and the first experience of the police prosecutor and the court's decision on your time between being yeah. in court and being released yeah <clears throat> we, we found too that um recently even going and trying, even if you don't get it, um, going and trying and putting some of these ideas out that this is police tactics and it's strategic yeah. incapacitation and the magistrates have believed lies. And we put that, if, you, if you're self-rep, you can say these things, right? You're not, if you're yeah. a lawyer, you can't say, oh, the magistrates believed a bunch of lies. You can't say yeah. that because that yeah. makes the magistrate. The sense. magistrate is, yeah, mates with the chief of police, who's mates with the... Forest, yeah. Forestry core is mates with fossil fuel industry is mates with the weapons industry. So we can we we can say that, but a, a lawyer can't say that. So that so we, it's sometimes just getting it into the court is good because then the next person in front of that magistrate is like, oh, I know I know this situation, and we had yeah. this 
legislation in Sydney. So this is not legal advice, but just no. one of the things that we're interested in is changing the courts culturally as well as yeah. legal, you know, so that um, because in but Sydney it's got so silly with magistrates just chucking people into jail for 15 months that now the they drew their own court into disrepute and now they're trying to peel it back. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, um, as a side thing to the obviously this podcast you know could be helpful to some people who are you know exploring these ideas and also you know obviously personally if you approach your local groups that are uh, involved in these um kind of actions we do do like actual physical face-to-face -face training about how to deal with the courts deal with um violent you know violence of the police and all that anyway that's just another that's whole, right so that'll help you figure this out. We offer. <laughs> you get caught up in this then there's somebody local who will help you don't try to figure it out yourself and try and yeah. get activist perspective to go with your legal advice this is not absolutely, legal absolutely yeah get, get legal advice by all means but i'll consider all the other perspectives that you have the power and democracy actually means people power you know from its original source totally and that is what we're here for today <laughs> Thank you, Kat. so this is daisy and margie and this is not legal advice not legal advice uh, and today we've been talking about bail and share us and uh, pass it on to people yeah. that you know might need this information thank you yeah and good luck next week margie thanks yeah